Uh, so over the, the past day and a half, we've heard all about how uh, people have been genera uh, generationally brought up in the context of the R01 grant, and it's, and it's, it's restricted the way team science is conducted um, at its utmost. Um, since the NIH is such a large uh, entity and is unlikely to change very rapidly, are there ways that we can encourage um, better team science in the context of the way things are set up currently? That's, that's a really good question, and I think that uh, it, it's the assumption here, which is an important one, is that be careful what you ask for because that's what you're going to get. And I think the way the NIH has traditionally structured its funding mechanism uh, makes sure that it gets what it asks for, which is more individual-based science and the R01 being the classic example of it. Um, I don't see the R01 going away anytime soon. I think it's important to recognize that there is a place and role for it. But I think the NIH itself recognizes that a lot of the work that is being done in this area has to be done by teams. And they are thinking hard, in my opinion, about how to incentivize that process. Uh, I've been at workshops at NIH where the leadership have gone actually in front of a group of folks and said, shouldn't we be thinking about a TO1, like a team uh, uh, award, just like we think about the R01. So these are things they're thinking about structurally. Uh, they are doing even more in terms of helping facilitate team science. The group uh, at uh, the National Cancer Institute, um, that there are several uh, important people there, Dr. Kara Hall being one of them as part of a science research and technology branch. And a major focus for them is to understand how to facilitate team science. They have developed something called a team science toolkit where you can go on the web and learn how to be at different stages, how to be able to work more effectively in teams. So I think that given that they are already helping enable this kind of focus, um, I think it is entirely possible that in the foreseeable future, uh, the NIH will in fact start awarding team projects. The tension is going to be that people look at it as a zero sum game. So any money and any funding that goes towards team awards means there'll be less funding for the R01. And frankly, once people, uh, research community looks at that as a zero-sum game, they sometimes get less excited about, at least some of them get less excited about the team uh, awards because it's going to take away from the already shrinking funds, funds that may be available for R01. So you look outside of NIH and you see that there are places um, uh, in, in industry and in, in philanthropic settings that are recognizing the limitations of NIH in this respect and are thinking more creatively. A, a classic example was featured in the cover of Time magazine in April of this year. The, the cover said Time to Cure Cancer and it talked about a group that is largely, but was founded by Hollywood um, celebrities and uh, it is, uh, it's, it's, so the group is called Stand Up to Cancer, SU2C. And the entire focus of it is to say, you know, NIH awards typically are in the neighborhood of about half a million, 500,000. We are going to think about investing in giving research awards that are in the millions of dollars, 18 million, 20 million dollars for a single award. And let's put together the large teams that are required to be able to focus on that. Those are teams that are told publication is not the highest priority. Reducing the burden of cancer is the top priority of these teams. And so that is a new sort of experiment. And they think of it as investing in a Hollywood blockbuster movie, but instead now investing in trying to help reduce the burden of cancer. So there are these alternative models. Um, how does this uh, work? How does it get reviewed? They have got some really well-known Nobel Prize winners who serve on their review panel, and these groups are supposed to report back. So there's an accountability built in. Uh, will this succeed? Well, let's call it an $18 million experiment to see how well these things work. Uh, but clearly, there is an effort in society at large to move, whether it's at NIH or outside, to move towards building the infrastructure necessary to do team science.